Hello there, my heavy armor aficionados, and welcome to another episode from my series about the Imperial Guard vehicles. Just like I promised you in my Lehman Ross tank introduction video, the day has finally come to discuss some of its variants. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about all the variants today, because it turns out there's actually 9 of them, and that means it'll probably be at least 3 videos to cover all of it. For today though, I wanted to discuss about 2 of them, and they could be no more different from each other. They are the Lehman Ross Conqueror and the Lehman Ross Incinerator. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Lehman Ross Conqueror This variant differs from the standard pattern Lehman Ross in that its main weapon is a Conqueror cannon, as opposed to a battle cannon. The Lehman Ross tank has many variants, and the Conqueror is one of the most uncommon as the standard template construct designs used in its construction were only recently rediscovered by the Adeptus Mechanicus. Although the Lehman Ross Conqueror is relatively new to the Imperium's arsenal, it has already proven itself to be a very capable line-breaker tank, used to penetrate and surround the formations of enemy armor. The SDC design for the Lehman Ross Conqueror were rediscovered on the Forge World of Griffon IV, sometime during the 38th millennium. When the designs were originally found, many within the ranks of the Adeptus Mechanicus feared that the Conqueror cannon's smaller size would result in a loss of firepower and poor battlefield performance when compared to the standard Lehman Ross battle cannon. But these fears were soon laid to rest during the weapon's field testing. The weapon was shown to have greatly reduced recoil, due to the gun's torsion bar counterbalance mechanism, and this provided the new tank design greater accuracy when firing on the move. The weapon's smaller size also gave the vehicle greater mobility, and allowed its loaders to keep up a higher rate of fire. The weapon's use of smaller shells allowed the Conqueror to carry more ammunition, and thus it made it less reliant on resupply during an operation. The space saved in the turret also allowed for the use of a coaxial storm bolter. The Conqueror is one of only two Lehman Ross variants that make use of a coaxial weapon, the other one being the Lehman Ross Vanquisher. The turret also has additional armor plating on the forward side and improved air intake valves and vents. It also has a rear hatch that can be used to quickly rearm the tank and also to dispose of spent shell casings, without a crew member having to leave its armored interior. The entire first production run of Lehman Ross Conqueror tanks was issued to the Skitari legions of Griffon IV and their first action was to partake in the Castra campaign. During this campaign, the Adeptus Mechanicus Skitari and the Legio Griffonicus Titan Legion were tasked with the destruction of enemy forces which were held up inside of Hive Castra Septus. The Conqueror-equipped Skitari Legions were able to keep up with the advance of the Titans, as they attempted to encircle the Hive City and trap the enemy combatants within. Enemy forces were unable to make it past the combined force of the Titans and the Conqueror tanks, and after the Titans created breaks in the defender's defensive line, the Conquerors rushed into their midst, completely annihilating the traitors. After their success, the Lehman Ross Conqueror was put into full production, and was slowly but steadily exported to Imperial Guard armored regiments across the galaxy. Sometime during the 39th millennium, the Adeptus Mechanicus munition adepts of Griffon IV tried to create a new type of shell for the Conqueror cannon. This shell, known as the Augur shell, was supposed to increase the tank's firepower, but was considered a complete failure during testing. Thus, the production of the Augur shell is no longer permitted for this design. In the 41st millennium, the Lehman Ross Conqueror is still an uncommon sight in many Imperial Guard regiments, as the SDC designs used in its construction are found only on the Forge World of Griffon IV. 
The original designs that were recovered on Gryphon 4 now reside on Mars, waiting to be processed for distribution across the Mechanicus' Manufactorum network, and at present there are several other Forge worlds lobbying to gain access to them. The Lehman Ross Conqueror is very well liked by its crews, due to its speed, mobility, and high rate of fire, and it has, unofficially, become known as a breakthrough tank, because of its common tactical deployment by guard commanders to exploit gaps in the lines of the enemy. The most common configuration for the Sponson mount is two heavy bolters or two heavy flamers. Lehman Ross tanks that are part of an unusually well-equipped armored regiment sometimes have two multi-meltas or even two plasma cannons as their Sponson weaponry. The tank can also be equipped with camouflage netting, extra armor plating, a hunter-killer missile launcher, improved communications equipment, a minesweeper, a pintle-mounted heavy stubber or storm bolter, track guards, rough terrain modifications, a dozer blade, and smoke launchers. All Lehman Ross Conqueror tanks are equipped with searchlights mounted on the turret, which are used to illuminate enemies and are also used for nighttime communication in case of a Vox failure. Some notable users of the Lehman Ross Conqueror include the 74th Cadian Armored Regiment, the 27th Koenig Armored Regiment, the 8th Palladius Armored Regiment, the 66th Arcadian Armored Regiment, the 11th Mordant Armored Regiment, the Armageddon Steel Legion, the 3rd and 12th Talarn Armored Regiments, the 28th Valhallen Armored Regiment, the 5th Blitzen Heavy Armor Regiment, and the 8th Pardus Armored Regiment. And lastly, on this tank, some technical specifications. It weighs 62 tons, it has a length of 7.08 meters, a width of 4.86 meters, a height of 4.42 meters, Maximum speed on road is 34 km an hour. Maximum speed off road is 24 km an hour. Its main ammunition holds 46 rounds. Its secondary ammunition holds 1000 rounds, if it's a storm bolter or heavy bolter. The superstructure armor is 180 mm. The hull armor is 150 mm. The gun mantlet armor is 100 mm, and the turret armor is 200 mm. The Lehman Ross Incinerator This is a Lehman Ross variant very rarely seen in the late 41st millennium. During the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy eras of the 30th and early 31st millennia, the incinerator was one of the most powerful versions of the tank available to the regiments of the Imperial Army. The elite cohorts of the Solar Auxilia in particular were known to field the incinerator in large numbers as infantry support or to accompany armor-borne assault thrusts. The twin-linked Volkite demi culverin with which the incinerator was armed was a rare and highly prized weapon more commonly seen on the war machines of the Legiones Astartes. This particular pattern of the Lehman Ross tank is almost unheard of in the armies of the late 41st millennium, having been replaced by the more versatile Hellhound APC. Many sub-patterns mounted a wide array of weapons in service of the elite armored formations of the Solar Auxilia, and were often enhanced to the so-called Solar Pattern, fitted with supplementary survival and exploration systems. Lehman Ross tanks in the Solar Auxilia strike squadrons were fitted with extended fuel reserves and their engines enhanced with forced induction chargers. These combined together to increase the tank's speed and operational range substantially. Lehman Ross assault squadrons consisted of heavily armored variants of the Solar Pattern, reconfigured for direct assault against fortified enemies. They lacked the speed of the Lehman Ross strike squadrons, but were formidably durable. 
Their main weapons were comparatively short-ranged in relation to the artillery batteries, but they were used in a direct assault role or in close support of the infantry tercios. The incinerator mounted a terrifying twin-linked Volkite Demi-Culverin, a powerful weapon from the Age of Technology that could tear through entire infantry squads with ease. Like all Volkite weapons, it produces a deflagrating attack, in which subsonic combustion caused by a beam of thermal energy is propagated through the target by thermodynamic heat transfer. So that hot burning material heats the next layer of cold substrate and ignites it. In this regard, the incinerator's weapon system only proved inferior to the mighty Volkite Carronade, mounted on the Glaive Super Heavy Special Weapons Tank of the Legiones Astartes. However, it still remained more than capable of burning entire squads of enemy infantry to ashes in the blink of an eye. Due to painstaking calibration process and intensive need for maintenance, the Lehman Ross incinerator has progressively vanished. The technological know-how and expertise required to maintain its complicated and delicate weapon system becoming ever rarer. In the armies of the late 41st millennium, the role of the Lehman Ross incinerator has been taken over by the Hellhound, and only very few venerable Imperial Guard regiments still maintain a few of these rare but very powerful relic machines. Armaments used by the incinerator include the twin-linked Volkite demi culverin, a heavy bolter, searchlight, smoke launchers, auxiliary drive, and an induction charger. Optional war gear can include a multi-laser, heavy flamer, las cannon, armored ceramite, pintle-mounted multi-laser or heavy flamer, hunter-killer missile launcher, a dozer blade, and extra armor plating. And that, my friends, is what I wanted to tell you about these two Lehman Ross variants for today. If you guys have any specific variants of the Lehman Ross that you'd like to see covered next, do feel free to write them down in the comments below and I will deliver. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to help me keep the channel afloat, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an amazing day. The Emperor protects.